Good afternoon and welcome to this wonderful broadcast that comes to you live from the Ashmolean Museum and indeed from the uh, studio, the uh, gallery in which uh, these wonderful prints that we're going to talk about and the accompanying poems um, are located. I'm Wes Williams, I'm Professor of French Literature and also the Director of TORCH, the Oxford Research Centre in the Humanities here at the University of Oxford. This event is coming to you as part of the Japan season uh, brought to you by the Humanities Cultural Programme in collaboration with the Ashmolean Museum and we're enormously proud and privileged to be here today with uh, three particular uh, artists and curators and poets. It's a great honour then to introduce our artist today, Naoko Matsubara. I'm not going to say a great deal about each of these uh, people involved in today's conversation because the information is on the website and we want to get on with the conversation properly. But it's because of Naoko's work that we're here and it's because of these images that, that they're at the start of where, we, where this discussion takes place. Alongside Naoko, there's a poet, Penny Boxall, whose responses to these images uh, in the gallery, as you can see behind us, are set alongside uh, the images. And also, I just want to say there's a wonderful book as well, um, which accompanies uh, the exhibition, uh, in which, again, all the poems uh, have a slightly different place, in so that, that they're on the same page. Um, and we might come back to this discussion about where poetry and the image sits alongside each other. This whole thing has been expertly and beautifully curated by Claire Pollard, who's also here today and will be part of our discussion. That's the introductions. What I wanted to do was start by asking the two of you um, how you came to be interested in each other's work. So I'll start with Penny, since um, I imagine, well, the work was there first. How did you come to be interested in Naoko's work and what brought you to this point? Well, um, I saw Naoko's exhibition Lifelines in um, October 2019, and I was just really stunned by the colours that Naoko uses. I think there's something very speaking about the forms that Naoko puts together. Um, and I had previously worked at the Ashmolean alongside Claire in the Eastern Art Department. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Claire showed me some of the collaborations that Naoko had done with poets. So in that exhibition, there were um, some beautiful poems alongside Naoko's prints. And so um, later when we were talking about um, possibly doing a collaboration for this book and exhibition, um, Claire very kindly um, approached me. And so I suppose um, for me it's a real treat because um, I have worked in museums for several years and I really like responding to objects and artworks. So this was a particularly nice collaboration where it felt like I could um, respond to sort of tactility within the artworks, mm -hmm. um, as opposed perhaps to sort of objects that you yep. handle. So yep. Yep. yeah, it's, it's a lovely kind of symbiosis of, um, of various strands in my life that have mm -hmm. pulled together. Terrific. So Claire, you were the kind of dating agency here who put these, <laughs> who put these two together. Is that's that right. right? That's right. right. That's okay. right. She did it, yeah. Right. I okay. didn't know her. Ah, okay. yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and, but you had worked with poets before, is that right? Yes. Right. Yes. And has that been a constant through your work? Or? No, no, no. But but I have. Uh, the poet always come to me, would you mind doing this and so on. Mm -hmm. And it always happened to be a British poet. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I'm so connected to this country. Uh, but I have done many other things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, oh. And Claire, what made you think that this particular body of work might work with a kind of poetic accompaniment? I was actually working from an existing idea. In fact, um, when was it? Just the, the year before we had the, the Lifelines exhibition, Naoko gave us an incredibly generous gift of over a hundred of her, her works, her woodcuts. Mm -hmm. And we did um, uh, this exhibition Lifelines, which is a celebration of that gift. It was a kind of a mini retrospective, but there wasn't room to put everything in. Um, and so we, I, I took the decision to keep this one series mm -hmm. out and do something um, different with it, keep it together and, and, and right. make it special. And um, I was aware that in the past, back I think it was the 1980s, wasn't it? Now had actually started working with a British poet, Robin Skelton, ah. um, 
in this form. That's I mean, right. He had written some poems yes. to, um, to yeah. the works, yes. um, but the project was never finished. And it seemed such a, a lovely idea um, that I thought it might be worth reviving. So I suggested it to Naoko, mm -hmm. who was enthusiastic. And then it, it, Penny immediately came to mind because I think, I, well, I knew Penny from working here and I knew her poems. Mm -hmm. And they just seemed to have so many similarities in their kind of mood. I mean, the, the, the clarity and the, the playfulness and the kind of the range of, of mood um, just seemed to kind of chime very much with Naoko. So I was hoping very much that Naoko would also like them, and she did. So that was, that was how it all came about. So I thought, let's do, um, make a, a, another book, but also yep. have an exhibition um, to, to, kind of, to, to bring them all together. Right. So it's not so much that you auditioned, and that you went through a whole range of different poets and thought, right, I'll have that one. It was more curated than that, um, right from the outset. Is that right? Yes, and I mean, yeah. I did, we, I mean, it wasn't set in stone, but I, oh. um, we, we talked about whether we should use Robin Skelton's poems mm -hmm. and add some more, mm -hmm. whether Penny would be one of a few new, several new poets to mm -hmm. include, but mm -hmm. in the end, we just felt that Penny's poems would work best, I think. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Young generation, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, there's that. I'm asking these questions yeah. partly because throughout the humanities cultural programme, one of the things we've been interested in is craft, mm -hmm. is, is the actual making. So we have actors talk about what it is to act mm -hmm. and directors and, and, and the sort of detail of the craft. Um, and I wondered, Naoko, if you could just tell us a little bit <coughs> about how you make these images, because um, Penny drew attention, and I think rightly, to the colour and the extraordinary colour that's, that's, in, uh, that, that's in each of these images. Uh, could you just talk us through a little bit about the actual making um, of any one of well, these images? Uh, I have been doing this for such a long time. At the beginning, I was doing a lot of black and white, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, a huge woodcut. And little by little, color started to come in. And when I started to do this series of In Praise of Hands, that was when my son was a baby. Mm -hmm. And I watched a baby who couldn't say a thing and couldn't even move, but he started to, first he was crunching like that, and then a little bit up, and then doing all sorts of things day after day. So I started to write down what kind of verb this little creature can do it. Mm -hmm. And then I was startled the variety of movement, this mm -hmm. little hands can do it. And then I said, well, human being, the first communication is not a word, but hands. And then why not I do some woodcut on hands? And I didn't do a baby hands right away. The first one I did is actually this water. Huh. And, and then, <coughs> went on slowly, little, little by little. But because this is a, such a whimsical uh, subject, I said, why not I'm going to pick lots of colors. I did not know too much color at the time, mm. but I used a lot of color and gradually it grew. So this is uh, many years of my work. At the beginning I did a lot, but I wanted to do more and more, mm -hmm. so it worked. Right. And the subject is hand, but always it's cutting wood and printing. That's my work as a woodcut artist. So woodcut produced some very ancient, basic feeling of human whatever. And it was the easiest thing for me to express instead of just drawing or painting. Mm -hmm. So it suited me very much. Mm -hmm. I'm always using a knife into the wood, and cutting wood is a delightful feeling, like a naughty boy wants to <laughs> carve everything. <laughs> and that yeah. sort of feeling mm -hmm. is I, I treasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it is so close to nature. Mm -hmm. That's what I like a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the child in you, the naughty boy in you, as well as the naughty boy, maybe he wasn't a naughty boy, the little boy that you were watching, your son, um, that is in a sense at the beginning of this whole process. Yes. But also stays with you throughout. Yes, I have done woodcut 
thousands, really. Yeah. And uh, I still will continue. Yeah. And I also paint, too, mm -hmm. and make, make objects and so on. But woodcut is my mainstream. Mm. As it happens, <laughs> woodcut is one of the four images and poems which I thought we might actually spend a bit of time with. Mm. And I wonder, Penny, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you mind reading your own... Uh, so we'll put the image up, um, and you'll see uh, that there's a woodcut of uh, a, a brown... The, the principal colour is a kind of reddish brown. Um, I'm assuming that's partly to tell us about the wood itself. Is that right, or is that too representational of me? Do we know why... No, no I wanted to show the grain yes. at the same time, and always wood is rugged. It's not a smooth line, and I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then Penny's poem runs as follows. It won't take long. <laughs> wood cut from wood negates the gulf between a picture and the thing itself. What led you to write that? Well, I mean, Naoko has talked about the kind of livingness of wood and, and how versatile wood is. And what struck me on seeing this image is the, the grain is so beautifully visible. And that kind of represented quite a few things to me. I mean, firstly, it's sort of redolent of, of skin and the kind of um, process of sort of beautifying through age that I think is very, um, very much present in these cuts. Um, but also, um, I just thought it was sort of... Um, it, it really did feel like it was more than, than the thing itself. It felt like this image... Was, was representative of something much larger than, than just what it sort of ostensibly shows. Um, and I think I was, I was sort of making comment on, on the process of writing as well, mm -hmm. craft generally, that mm -hmm. um, the image or the poem can bring you close to an experience in a way that actually sometimes experiencing it itself, uh, it, it's, that's slightly more glib sometimes. So mm -hmm. it, it felt like it kind of was a way into the, the grain of the experience, mm -hmm. um, I think. Mm. Um, That's a nice phrase, the grain of the experience. Um, uh, and it reminds me, in fact, of a, a phrase by Roland Barthes where he talks about the grain of the voice and how voice can have this granular texture. It was important to me when I was curating this that the, 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 the collaboration, the kind of the creative synergy between Naoko and Penny would really come through. Um, and in a museum, you have sort of practical rules about where you put labels and, and how high. And, mm -hmm. and in fact, in the Ashmole, we have a, a standard way of, of putting the labels sort of level with the bottom frame, um, bottom edge of the frame. Mm -hmm. But in this case, that was important that we didn't do that. It was much more important to have a, a kind of a much closer relationship between, between the two. So we sort of moved, moved the, um, the, the poems up. Um, clearly, again, for practical reasons, um, you have to think about the, 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 the woodcuts first because they're big and you have to work out how much space you have and what yep. you put where. Right. Yep. Um, um, so just from that point of view, the, the poems did come afterwards, um, but, but no, they, it was very important that they shouldn't be kind of a, a second thought. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And yes, just going back to the, to the, um, to, to the to woodcut, I chose to put that right at the, be the beginning of the exhibition yes. for all those reasons. Yes. Um, yes, I thought that was an important way to start the exploration. Yeah. Yes. yes, it's when you come in. It's like, yeah. these oh. are going to be about yeah. woodcuts, yeah. and here they are. Yes. So, and, and I suppose that's the other thing I wanted to explore, was the extent to which um, the craft, this comes back to you, Naoko, perhaps, mm -hmm. the craft is itself something that you're telling people about. When they come into the exhibition, they're learning what it is to make this stuff. Is that right? I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are those, are those your hands? Those are your hands. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So Just there's... about all of them are hand. It mm. becomes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's it's interesting. Yeah. And and I watch my way of which one is the longest and so on. Mm -hmm. It went exactly to my son, mm -hmm. and and my granddaughter has exactly the same hands. I couldn't believe it. And this one is slightly crooked. Mm -hmm. Always. And hers, too. Wow. <laughs> so we even inherit each other's hands. It um, is. Yeah. yeah. And she, she's clever with I, hands. I was going to say, clever. has she inherited your craft as well? She did. Yes. And <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, your son has something to do with this book. 
uh, graphic design he designed, yes. Right. Yes. Which was so, we were so thrilled about that the little baby who inspired the series yeah. would end up designing the book that we yeah. did. It was, yeah. We were really, really delighted about that. Yeah. Um, um, if I can have the book mm. back and I'll just... Because um, I, I suppose it would be interesting to just think a little bit more about the relation of text to image because often, well, as you say, in a museum... Usually there's a sort of explanatory thing underneath which either dates it or tells us something about the, the, the artist and so on. Here it's a different kind of relationship, partly because you've got the dates and the titles um, in the image itself. Mm -hmm. So the first one that you did, for example, it says water in praise of hands, brackets 74, mm -hmm. and your signature. So, um, I, I'm, again, I'm interested in whether you thought you were sort of well, responding to, but also commenting on, or you're presumably not describing what you're looking at. Yeah, it was quite important to me that I wasn't simply describing, because it felt like that would have been sort of um, restrictive yep. um, for Naoko's work um, as well, because I, I didn't, I felt like there's this sort of openness to your work, and I didn't want to only, say, this is what it is. You yeah, know? <laughs> only two or three I wanted her to redo it. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah. 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 And how does that work? Talk us through that then. I explained to her more. Yes. It's, it, this is my important print, and, yes. and that's the way I wanted to show. Yep. And uh, it's slightly different at, at the time. Mm -hmm. So she worked, not this one, not this one, and she mm -hmm. worked. She's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an element of woodcutting in your job as well, yeah. in other words, to get, to get the image right, to um, get the words right. I yeah. think... Um, that's another thing I responded to is, um, as I understand it now, you work directly into the block, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. So I felt like I wanted that kind of um, drafting process mm -hmm. to happen with my poems as well. I, mm -hmm. I wanted there to be a spontaneity and a kind of, um, I hope, a rightness to mm -hmm. the way the poems came out. Yep. So it was really important to me that Naoko was happy with the poems as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing I'm very interested in is, is silence and and how silence can speak and i think this is quite important for the series because of, you know about communication mm -hmm. through hands yes um lots of the poems are pretty short but i've um taken quite a lot of care with with gaps and um line breaks and spacing mm -hmm. because to me those spaces are as important as the words Interesting. it's about the placement of um yeah. of the words and how I they don't resonate. know much about poetry but it's interesting mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah. so in fact, just before uh, we met mm -hmm. today, I had a little... First time around. we met yes, today. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, fantastic. Which is a real joy. Um, <laughs> I had a little look around the Ashmolean and I was very aware of the hands mm -hmm. as I went round and I was thinking how they can, you know, be statements of intent or they can show power or vulnerability. And often in statues, they're, they're missing. And I sort of thought about what that says and how the, those absences can ha create really quite big gaps into which we can imagine as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, it was, you know, extrapolated quite far, but in, in lots of ways I wanted the gaps within the poems as well. I wanted mm -hmm. them to be um, physically gappy in some instances and also to um, have room to breathe. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I tried not to be too specific mm -hmm. in, in quite a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're clearly... Uh, in tune with this idea of having room to breathe. Um, I, I was struck by that actually in looking at the images as well. Uh, and that's partly about the curation of them. They're not, you know, the frames are not too tightly in. There's plenty of, of, mm -hmm. of space. Breathing around. space. Yeah. Yes. Is that, that's important to you. Very it? important. Yeah. Because? <sighs> yeah, another thing is very important is what do you print onto? And I always use handmade Japanese paper called washi. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of different ones. Mm -hmm. Without it, the result is very bad. Right. And, and the, it's the collaboration of ink and this washi. Mm -hmm. And washi takes ages to make it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a beauty. It's each time when I print, I admire how beautiful this paper takes the ink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is it about? Because the paper is actually not grained, is it? Or am I it just not seeing it? It is made of made of that uh, some kind of trees bark, inner uh -huh. bark. Right. It takes ages to make it. Three different ones. Right. 
some of it is very, very faintly green because we oh. tried to reproduce that effect on the panel, um, the introductory panel. It's, right. We didn't want a completely flat colour, yeah. but so we, we have yeah. taken a bit, but it's very, very gentle. It doesn't sort of, it's not so, sometimes in Japanese prints it's part of the, the overall effect, but here it doesn't, it doesn't sort of fight with the, with right. the image itself. But right. there's a very faint grain. Okay. We've talked about silence. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that I'm uh, a specialist in French literature and in particular 16th century uh, work and there's a great writer Montaigne who has um, in one of his essays a long list and a very long list of all the things we do with our hands. Um, I'm not going to read it to you now mm -hmm. but it's, um, uh, it starts with silence. In other words he starts by saying um, uh, he's talking about communication between animals as well. He talks about dog barking. And then he says, and look, I, I've spent some time, he says, looking at uh, deaf mutes um, and the incredible things they can communicate with their hands. And actually, so he starts with them rather than with the child. He then has a long list of all the things we do with our hands. Mm -hmm. And the last thing he has in his les list is keep silent. Um, and so there's an, even a notion that we might be silent with our hands um, as well as uh, all the other things that he mentions. What made me think, or what that made me think of, is the image that's on the front of this book, mm -hmm. which is um, of uh, a flute and some hands. Mm -hmm. In other words, an image that ought to make a noise, um, but of course an image doesn't quite in itself make mm -hmm. a noise. And I wondered if we might spend a bit of time with this image, which you have said is actually a very popular one, or that people somehow... People like this yes. print a lot. Yes. Um, well, I, as I told you, my husband uh, was the professional Highland bagpiper, though he's a British, mm -hmm. and uh, he was uh, practicing, practice chanta, just a little one, every single day like that, uh, besides doing the real thing. And so I did little sketch and then I watched and so on. Then that, this image came to me. And how do you do it? You know, you can do it with very, very realistically. Mm -hmm. I can draw, but I always like to be a bit off from that really how it looks like. I wanted to capture almost the sound itself or a movement itself. It doesn't have to be exactly. So with two colors, I did this and this with different colors, mm -hmm. and somehow it works. Two colors become three colors mm -hmm. as overwrapping. Then it starts to have some kind of rhythm, some kind of music, and then I said, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then my husband said, it's all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all wrong, I, I don't care. <laughs> and lots of people who like this print, I tell, tell them that my husband said, that's wrong. They said, it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's OK. Yeah. Yes. I think you're right that actually what, what first gets you about this image is movement. Mm -hmm. And then in a sense, you translate the movement into sound somehow. Sort of a sound. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Almost it gets to your head if you are listening again and again and again. Yeah. So that is good. Yeah. yeah. Could you talk us through, um, for people who don't understand how these things are made, how do you work with colour here? So it's, presumably there's a kind of series of processes here? I forgot which is the key one. <laughs> it's so long time ago. Maybe, suppose the red one is the key. So first I make this pink color mm -hmm. block mm -hmm. and then you print it. Mm -hmm. And you have to wait a long time, as you said. Because no, no, ah, you, you okay. don't have to. Then you, you sort of print onto the second block, mm -hmm. this pink one. Mm -hmm. Then you know what the second block should do it. Mm -hmm. Where it should be overlap, where it should be just blue. It would, the well, overlapped one would be uh, purple, isn't it? Yep, yep. So that's how you start to carve, because I don't draw. Mm -hmm. I draw beside it, but not onto the wood. Yeah. And then you print together, one after the other. Then it doesn't work sometimes, so you overcut it. A little cutting more, like this one. I, I cut it here, mm -hmm. yeah. so it has a more movement. Yes. 
It's not that all philosophical, it's only just is it <laughs> well, but what you call call this? It's the feeling. Yes. It's just the feeling. Yeah. And uh, I am a visual person, so mm -hmm. visually it works or not is mm -hmm. the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's how it came about. And sometimes when I print wrong, uh, this become like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a registration mm -hmm. to do it just right. That's how this came out. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, explained enough? Absolutely. I wish I have a wood here to show you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have the book, and um, you say it's not philosophical, and I don't want to turn everything into philosophy, but there is a way in which you're thinking with your hands. Um, mm -hmm. as you're, so there's a kind of embodied thinking, mm -hmm. um, even, even there. Um, yeah. uh, and what you've described is actually yeah. a process of thinking, as much as of making, uh, yeah. I think, I don't want yeah. to put words into your mouth, but it seems to me that's what you're, you're also describing. Yes. And uh, it's also a, a feeling, I think. I remember yes. discussing feeling. with you before when we did the Lifelines exhibition, how sometimes you said when you're carving, you almost feel like there's a, a, a power coming from outside to help you... Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. yeah to help your, 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 the, the, the tools That's right. do their thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If mm -hmm. you are thinking, it becomes up very tight. Sure. Sure, sure. So something, I, I, I like some power to mm -hmm. come into me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, inspiration. Oh, yeah, inspiration, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I am cutting, but someone else is cutting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I really think we should introduce you to Montaigne because he says the same thing about his writing. Is that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and indeed is really interested. So the big long list of um, things about the hands is an addition which he adds in manuscript mm -hmm. on the printed copy of his book. Um, so he's written his book, he's published it, but he thinks, actually, I need to add this. Mm -hmm. So he scribbles in the margin mm -hmm, and says, let's mm -hmm. put this in the next edition. So it's even the book is endlessly it's the same being thing, written. same yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I love the way that I love the way that Montaigne has a list of what hands do, and and now of course series starts off with a list of what what your baby's hands yes, do. But yes, I was yes. talking to, to Naoko about this yesterday, and Naoko saying, gosh, you know. Wasn't Montaigne's world difficult because there are so many negative things mm. about hands, whereas whereas Naoko's hands are joyful and yep. innocent and full of potential, and yep. there is a sense of wonder there. Yeah, that yep. that shows mm. when Montaigne lived. It, yes. it was more gloomy world. It's true. I mean, he, it, it he was in the middle of a civil war. <laughs> yeah, he was I know, a professional I know. lawyer, and he, yeah. yeah, a lot of those words are professional gestures and also gestures of conciliation between warring parties. <laughs> um, and it's true that your world is a different world. Um, I wanted to come back to your poem, though, mm. because you talked about um, the sort of two colours coming together and creating a third. Again, this may be fanciful of me, but I thought, gosh, that's interesting because you've written this in couplets. Um, and you talked about the gaps earlier. Yeah. So again, could you yes, better to read that and yeah. then talk and us through the poem a bit? Um, yeah, I'll read it first and then I'll tell you my thoughts. Flute. As if from a height, your quick-witted hands descend on the melody, a bright thread easing through the morning haze. The way you play recalls the woods in echo or a sort of tide. No age at all, this harmony. Two strands, the piper and the trees, and echoes spreading out beyond to everything. So I like that one <laughs> very much. Very much. Um, it's so nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And for me, the, the two elements are, you know, the, the hands and the flute, the wood in the, um, the wood block and the, the grain and the sort of, I've imagined some trees. I've imagined, because I, I know you, you said your husband would play outside often as well. And mm -hmm. I think that really mm -hmm. spoke to me. But also the colours. Mm -hmm. And for me, the, um, if, it, if this isn't too much of a stretch, but it feels like the, the third colour that's created from the two is the numinous. And mm -hmm. um, that's why I wanted the... That's this exciting part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, that's why I wanted the couplets and the sort of integral silence between, between mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as, as you were saying, the image is of a thing that is making sound, though mm -hmm. we can't quite catch that sound. Mm -hmm. The poem is recalling that sound as well, as well as the image, and all of those things kind of evoked, but not actually um, visible or, or tangible. And so I've, I've felt like this was our collaboration no, as well. It's, it's you know, the so two, well two done. things we so kind well of done. ended yeah. up 
creating something uh, yeah. a little bit outside yeah. of ourselves yeah. as well, which I, I was so happy That's about. That's great. Um, May I say something about this cutting? Uh, since I, I told you about these two blocks, this one is ha ah. the dancer. That's the next one I want to come on to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I started. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for and, it. Please. And this one I'm so fond of myself. And this time I did it with this color and, and the pink, two, two one, and then get orange for the third color. And I looked at it and looked at it. Actually, I started to do this from uh, watching so many times of Indian uh, uh, the dancer, mm -hmm. which a lot of Indian dancers uh, are in uh, Toronto, where I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the way their, their hands, all sorts of things they do. And, mm -hmm. and so at the end, I printed just one and look at it and compare it for the two colors. Then I preferred this, so came up with this. Mm -hmm. And that happens too in my process. Mm -hmm. So I just discarded the second block. Mm -hmm. So artists will do all sorts of things. Of course. All sorts of tricks. Of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it really was the one I wanted to come to next. Yes, um, please ask me. Because, um, uh, again, I found it, uh, the precision of it, yes. um, so beautiful. And because, actually, it's unlike a lot of the other hands. Mm -hmm. A lot of your other hands are sort of lumpy, mm -hmm. if you like. Or you mm -hmm. can see each bit, each, um, mm -hmm. each section of the finger. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, there's a sort of, the hands have been transformed, mm -hmm. even by the act of, of, of dancing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then you, in your poem, transform them into something else again, um, uh, into kind of other people's hands, if you like. Mm -hmm. And again, I wonder if we might just read the poem mm. and think about that. She is precise, like those rumoured angels dancing on the head of a pin, or the way the same pin extracts a perfect bead of blood from the exact place where your heart line ends. So now we turn from a dance into a blood test. Um, <laughs> and I suppose what that, again, why I found that very powerful is because the knife comes back, your knife that you're, you're working with, um, and also the sort of the heart blood of creation, if you like, that there's a sort of blood that's pumping through you mm -hmm. while you make this. And mm -hmm. you mentioned a while ago that there's a danger in this work as well. It is. And I, I mean, I wanted to ask a very I, blunt I question. Cut, I cut how my, often do you cut your hand? I cut my fingers rather a lot. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Bandages, <laughs> packs of... <laughs> uh, and that's just part of the life of a, of a person who works in this medium, is it? I'm clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't look like you're clumsy. But, so that, you, you take that on, if you like, as part of the process. Is, is the, no, the, no, no, you don't have to. You ah. don't have to. You have to be careful, that's all. Right. Yeah, okay. but I have such good knives. Mm -hmm. And another thing, you have to sharpen your knives. Mm -hmm. That is your meditation time. Mm -hmm. Really slowly, slowly it takes ages to go and go, and I really love to do it. This side, if it is V gauge, you have to do it this side and this side, just at the same weight. Mm -hmm. Not if you too heavy, then it destroys. Mm -hmm. So you have to be so meditative. Mm. Takes maybe two hours to the whole set. Gosh. Gosh. And, okay. and that's part of our life, of woodcut artists. Right. Yeah. But I have woodcut uh, tools from Japan, mm -hmm. Switzerland, Germany, United States, maybe British one too, lots of them. Mm -hmm. And they all have different metal. So mm -hmm. it's different mm -hmm. stones, you have to use it. Mm -hmm. And when you start to talk about stones, there are lots to say. <laughs> There really is, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I met a guy, happened to in Japan, who said, I'm going to go to a conference. I said, Are you a professor? Mm -hmm. No. So, what kind of conference? It is sharpening knives. That kind of conference. Wow. So, we started to talk and talk and talk. Mm -hmm. And then, when I said goodbye, 
after, maybe two months after I came back to Canada, he sent me a lot of interesting stones and interesting knives. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. <laughs> so a particular form of knife or kind of metal would look for a particular stone? Stones, how to sharpen it. Right. And he said, Japanese stone is the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I am using Arkansas stone from the United States. Oh, that's all right. That sort of talk. <laughs> okay. You see? <laughs> this, I think, allows us to talk about one, one more thing, and then we'll, we'll kind of come towards a conclusion. And that's precisely the degree to which your work is in a Japanese tradition, or whether you think of yourself rather in a sort of, um, maybe both in that tradition and in a wider world? I mean, are you a Japanese artist? Are these Japanese prints? Um, we're Nothing. part of a festival about Japan, or is this, no? Nothing to do with Japanese tradition. Right. Completely different from most of the you know, histories of woodcut ukiyo-e prints. I do not work that way. They have very precise paintings. We say oh, hokusai. Hokusai doesn't carve. Mm -hmm. Someone else is carving. Mm -hmm. And that sort of division of labor is not what I do. Mm -hmm. I do everything. Mm -hmm. And I do not like to have a precise drawing to sort of copy it. Mm -hmm. And I want to create as I am cutting. Mm -hmm. And that's the exciting part of it. Mm -hmm. And very often when I was teaching, I, I told the student, make a lot of mistake and see your mistake and from there move on. Then there is something comes. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I work. And I don't have a preliminary sketches. Of course, usually I do draw things and that goes, goes in somewhere, mm -hmm. but not into the blocks. Mm -hmm. And sometime, I start to cut from here and end here, and it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's mm -hmm. always, and that's my way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think German Impressionist people did that way too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my main professor in a Japanese uh, art school was Viennese, mm -hmm. not Japanese. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, taught at Joseph Hochmann's mm -hmm. Vienna Secessions. Mm -hmm. Fantastic art educations. Mm -hmm. And I'm still grateful to her. Mm -hmm. So this may pose a problem for a curator then, Claire, which is where do you put this work in relation to other work uh, that is in the Ashmolean, that's in the history of print, and so on and so forth. It's hard to do it when the artist's here. What box are we going to put you in? What range of boxes? But I think it's an interesting question. How does one contextualize work like this um, in, in a way that, that honors this understanding of the work itself? Yes, well, it's, it's a really complicated question. And I think I've tried to avoid boxes as much as possible. But I am a curator of Japanese art, mm -hmm. and because Naoko is Japanese, um, and there is, you know, perhaps not so much in the hands, but in much of your work, there is, there are Japanese themes and, and ideas that, that come through. And I think being Japanese is important to you. It's um, in my blood. It's in your blood. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, so I think from that from that sense. Um, it's, it, it does fit into a, a Japanese tradition. I mean, in, actually, these works could belong in the Western art collection perfectly yes. easily. Um, just, it, again, it's sort of a, practically speaking, we happen to be given yep. two prints by somebody who collected you know, modern Japanese prints, mm -hmm. who gave us um, two works by Naoko several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so they ended up in our collection and we, we accepted them mm -hmm. um, at that stage. And, and that gave me a lovely excuse to require some more. And then mm -hmm. and Naoko gave us you know, a, a lot more. And I think up till now, we've, we've, just, we've, we've just exhibited them by themselves. Mm -hmm. So both Lifelines and this exhibition is, is purely mm -hmm. um, the woodcuts on their mm -hmm. own. And mm -hmm. I think they, 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 they have a universality, mm -hmm. um, but they still, I think in some ways they relate just in the, the materials that are used and part of the process. There is something uh, universal about hands and hand gesture and mm -hmm. hand movement and so mm -hmm. on. Um, 
There are particularities, like you said, with the dancers. I mean, I recognize that, yeah. I mm -hmm. think, as Bharatanatyam. So Bharatanatyam, yeah. yes. So there are, there are hand gestures, and every culture mm -hmm. has its kind of codified set of hand gestures. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, if one takes it back to a child and observing a child mm -hmm. learning before language, mm -hmm. um, again, Montaigne's uh, piece ends up by saying, we can do things with our hands which are à l'envie de la langue, in other words, which make the tongue envious. Um, in other words, exceed language. That puts you in a difficult position as a language merchant <laughs> or as a language writer. Um, and I think that one of the ways, I think one of the ways you deal with this brilliantly, actually, is in the poem that accompanies Cat's Cradle, um, where the opening line takes us on a journey across the world um, with some very specific locations. Um, and again, I thought we might just conclude with that poem. Mm. Um, and and with the image, it's um, where is it? Obviously, it's not numbered, so it's um, this about one. a third of the way through. There we yeah. are. Yeah. And actually, just before I read this, I, I think it would just be nice to mention the kind of um, arc of the book. We, mm -hmm. we this I, I, I corrected. I remember. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad we found one of those. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's beautiful that we, we open the book with um, an image of mother and baby, and it's um, Yoshi's hands that sort of, you know, run through but the But I want to ask you, have you done Cat's Cradle um, I as a have, child? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we concluded the book with, with a new print that Naoko mm. very beautifully created in response to a poem of mine. Ah, so it goes the other yes, way as well. Yeah, okay, um, and... Um, uh, and it, uh, it was a very moving um, image. It, uh, the poem was written in memory of my mother, and I think uh, now that's, just that's, the most the beautiful mm -hmm. uh, job of it. So I just love that there was this sort of arc mm -hmm. from, you know, we've got woods and we've got mothers and children and hands kind of drawing them all together. And mountains. mountains. This one. Yes. yes. This one. Yes. This is very nice one, isn't it? Yeah. She yeah. gave me the poems, and I picked one, and I did it. And, and it's about... Her mother. Yes. Mm. Yes, yeah. and she very just <laughs> lost her. Mm. So it has a lot of feeling. Mm -hmm. And according to my son, Mommy, I started here with my hand here, yeah. this one, mm -hmm. and you were ending yeah. with this one. Is that I asked his daughters? He said, <laughs> I said, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's as well. It's, it's yeah, as yeah. well. You know. yeah. Yeah. Yes, I also love that, the kind of the, the, the beginning and the end mm. with these same little children's red hands. hands. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which is very nicely yes. done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I like this poem and I like this one too. Yes, yes. 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 It's, yeah, very This special. is a real collaboration. <laughs> yes. um, okay, well, maybe we should move to that poem then. Yeah. Uh, by way of, I think, um, by way of conclusion. Um, and if you could read the poem to conclude, and then we can um, end with the image of, of that as well. Great. So. so this is the present. My mother handed me a gift. Close eyes. I took it in my ready palms. It was lighter than I would have thought. In slipping it from hand to hand, would traded more than its small weight. Some ancient magic touched us as it tipped from hers to mine, we changed position, expectation, tense. I'm here and looking at it still. This little thing her clever hands made happen is more precious for the growing space between us, more vital with each passing hour. I watch it closely now. Again, what's in that poem is this notion of space between, and it takes us back to the room to breathe that you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. but also, in a sense, the space between you two, um, where you each have your own particular craft, but they come together mm -hmm. in this collection. Is mm -hmm. that what you meant by this is a real collaboration? Yes, well? yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's both the story, the arc in the exhibition from, uh, or in the book at least, from mm -hmm. the child to the new child, mm -hmm. who may or not, may not be your granddaughter, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but also the sort of, the tension, if you like, which allows for a, a space to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, I'll come back to um, Claire to conclude with then, which is um, putting together an exhibition and a book um, in, this, uh, in this space, the Ashmolean, 
Um, I just wondered if you um, imagine that future collaborations of this kind should be done, might be possible, either between these two, but also more broadly, again, putting together visual art with poetry, um, images with words, that as a kind of, um, I think we've seen today, that that allows a certain kind of voice, a certain kind of silence to emerge as well. And I just wondered if you have a few reflections on that. Well, it was an, a wonderful a wonderful experience being able to see the collaboration between the, the two of them and it was um, I think it's, it's really exciting. I, I normally deal with historical works by um, by dead people and there's not much, there's not really much much option so it was it was um, really exciting a different way of, of, of interacting with with the artworks that we have. And I, I mean, I, I would love to do it again. And if, if you would both be interested, that would be really exciting. But no, I, yes, I think, it, I think there's a lot of potential. It's a, it's a different way of engaging with, with artwork. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything else before we stop? We should actually leave you with the last word if you want to say anything else. No, I'm very happy <laughs> to, to have this occasion. So it's more meaning to me than, you know, thousands of miles away, mm -hmm. just corresponding. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for letting us together. Really, be together like this. Yeah. So I really started to feel and think more, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And actually, she's translating my next book ah. of Manyoshu, which is the fifth to seventh century poetry of Japanese, ah, 4,500 ah. of them. Yes. I had to pick only 12 out of it. Right. It was so difficult. Right. And, and the translation of poem is impossible. Mm -hmm. It loses the sound yeah. mm -hmm. and the rhythm. Yeah. And sometimes it's the soul in there, and then translation doesn't have a soul. So, uh, Translating poem is mm -hmm. difficult. It's very difficult. And that's where she came in. And she's having... No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have to ask Penny's advice on this, I yeah. think. That's yeah. right. We are going to. We are going to. Yeah. 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 yeah, again, that's another craft, isn't it? The, yeah. the sort of literal translator who then hands it over to somebody else who puts the soul back in again sometimes. Yes, it's but very then the, hard. the other translator goes back. Yeah. I mean, I've done this work as well. And you're right, it's, it's, a, very, it's, a, it's a series of, of moves where you try and recapture something, but also release something new. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that's true. In, so you're, you're making woodcuts again, or is it a of different? Course, of course, of uh, course. Okay, right. <laughs> I am doing. Well, only because no, no, you say this, you draw and you I already well. made woodcuts for that. Ah, it, okay. they, they are, this time, it's not a reproduction. Okay. It is the printing from, from the wood blocks into washi. Mm -hmm. It's only 75 or 85 edition, that's all, in a beautiful mm -hmm. box, that sort of thing. Okay. Yes. Well, perhaps we can get you all together again to talk about yeah. that when that's ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much. It's been a great honour and a real pleasure, actually, to yeah. have this conversation. Um, and uh, I think that's all for now. And hopefully you at home, uh, watching this, wherever you are in the world, also enjoyed this. Thank you once again. Can I have that? Yes. <laughs> really? You can. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll so make it I available online uh, for everybody to see. Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>